Hi, we're the Pass the Time Players, and we want to welcome you this evening to our new story. Now, before we get started, we'd like to remind you to like us on Facebook, and then go over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our stories. Now, for this evening, we will be doing The Fisherman and His Wife. Now, let's meet our cast. Hi, I'm Joe. I'll be playing the narrator. And I'm Joe, and I will be playing the fisherman. I'm Brandy Joe, and I will be playing the flounder. And I'm Debbie, and I will be playing the wife. Now, let's sit back, get comfy, and enjoy the fisherman and his wife. Once upon a time, there was a fisherman and his wife who lived together in a filthy shack near the sea. Every day, the fisherman went out fishing, and he fished and he fished. Once he was sitting there fishing and looking into the clear water, and he sat and he sat. Then his hook went to the bottom, deep down, and when he pulled it out, he had caught a large flounder. To his surprise, the fish began to talk to him. Listen, fisherman, I beg you to let me live. I am not an ordinary flounder, but an enchanted prince. How will it help you to kill me? I would not taste good to you. Put me back in the water and let me swim. Once the fisherman got over the shock of a talking fish, he knew what he should do. Well, there's no need to say any more. I can certainly let a fish swim away. Who knows how to talk? With that, he put it back into the clear water and the flounder disappeared to the bottom. The fisherman got up and went home to his wife in the filthy shack. Husband, didn't you catch anything today? No, I caught a flounder, but he told me he was an enchanted prince, so I let him swim away. Swim away? Didn't you ask for anything first? No, what, what should I have asked for? It's terrible living in this shack. It stinks and it's filthy. You should have asked for a little cottage for us. Go back and call him. Tell him that we want to have a little cottage. He'll surely give it to you. Why should I go back there? You caught him and then you let him swim away. He will surely do this for us. Go right now. The man did not want to go, but neither did he want to oppose his wife, so he went back to the sea. When he arrived there, it was no longer clear, but yellow and green. He stood there and said, Flounder, flounder in the sea, my wife, my wife, Ilsebil, wants not, wants not what I will. The flounder swam up and looked at the fisherman. What does she want? Well, I did catch you, and, and now my wife says that I, I really should have asked for something. She doesn't want to live in a filthy shack any longer. She'd, she'd like to have a cottage. Go home. She already has it. So the man went home, and his wife was standing in the door of a cottage. Come in! See, now isn't this much better? There was a little front yard and a beautiful little parlor, a bedroom where their bed was standing, a kitchen and a dining room. Everything was beautifully furnished and supplied with tin and brass utensils, just as it should be. And outside there was a little yard with chickens and ducks and a garden with vegetables and fruit. Look, isn't this nice? Yes, this is quite enough. We can live very well here. We will think about that. Then they ate something and went to bed. Everything went well for a week or two, but the fisherman's wife wasn't satisfied. Listen, husband, this cottage is too small. The yard and the garden are too little. The flounder could have given us a larger house. I would like to live in a large stone palace. Go back to the flounder and tell him to give us a palace. Oh, wife, the cottage is good enough. Why would we want to live in a palace? I know why. Now you just go. The flounder can do that for us. Now, wife, the flounder has just given us the cottage. I don't want to go back so soon. It may make him angry. Just go. He can do it, and I'm sure he won't mind. Just go. The man's heart was heavy, and he did not want to go. He said to himself, this is not right. But he went anyway. 
When he arrived at the sea, the water was purple and dark blue and gray and dense. It was no longer green and yellow. He stood there and said, Flounder, flounder in the sea, my wife, my wife, Elzebul, wants not, wants not what I will. Once again, the flounder appeared. What does she want then? She, well, my wife wants to live in a stone palace. Go home. She's already standing before the door. The man went his way, thinking he was going to his home, but when he arrived, standing there was a large stone palace. His wife was standing on the stairway, about to enter. Taking him by the hand, she said, Come inside. He went inside with her. Inside the palace, there was a large front hallway with a marble floor. Numerous servants opened up the large doors for them. The walls were all white and covered with beautiful tapestry. In the rooms, there were chairs and tables of pure gold. Crystal chandeliers hung from the ceiling. Food and the very best wine overloaded the tables until they almost collapsed. Outside the house, there was a large courtyard with the very best carriages and stalls for horses and cows. Furthermore, there was a magnificent garden with the most beautiful flowers, fine fruit trees, and a pleasure forest a good half mile long with elk, deer, and everything that anyone could possibly want. Now, isn't this nice? Oh, yes, this is quite enough. We can live in this beautiful palace and be satisfied. We'll think about it. Let's sleep on it. And with that, they went to bed. The next morning, the woman woke up first. It was just daylight, and from her bed, she could see the magnificent landscape before her. Her husband was just starting to stir when she poked him in the side with her elbow. Husband, get up. Look out the window. Look. Couldn't we be king over all of this land? Oh, wife, why would we want to be king? I don't want to be king. Well, even if you don't want to be king, I want to be king. Go back to the flounder. Oh, wife, why do you want to be king? I don't want to tell him that. Why not? Go there immediately. I must be king. So the man, saddened because his wife wanted to be king, went back. This is not right. Not right at all. When he arrived at the sea, it was dark gray, and the water heaved up from below and had a foul smell. He stood there and said, Flounder, flounder in the sea, my wife, my wife, Ilsebil, wants not, wants not what I will. What does she want, then? She wants to be king. Go home. She is already king. Then the man went home, and when he arrived there, the palace had become much larger, with a tall tower and magnificent decorations. Sentries stood outside the door, and there were so many soldiers and drums and trumpets. When he went inside, everything was of pure marble and gold, with velvet covers and large golden tassels. Then the doors to the great hall opened up, and there was the entire court. His wife was sitting on a high throne of gold and diamonds. She was wearing a large golden crown, and in her hand was a scepter of pure gold and precious stones. On either side of her, there stood a line of maids in waiting, each one a head shorter than the other. Oh, wife, are you now king? Yes, now I am king. The fisherman stood and looked at his wife. Wife, it's very nice that you were king. Now we don't have to wish for anything else. No, husband. Time is on my hands. I cannot stand it any longer. Go to the flounder. I am king, but now I must become emperor. Oh, wife, why do you want to become emperor? Husband, go to the flounder. I want to be emperor. Oh, wife, he cannot make you emperor. I cannot tell the flounder to do that. There is only one emperor in the realm. The flounder cannot make you emperor. He cannot do that. What? I am king and you are my husband. Go there immediately. If he can make me king, then he can make me emperor. I have to be emperor. Go there immediately. 
So the fisherman had to go. As he went on his way, the frightened man thought to himself, This is not going to end well. To ask to be an emperor is shameful. The flounder is going to get tired of this. With that, he arrived at the sea. The water was all black and dense and boiling up from within. A strong wind blew over him that curdled the water. He stood there and said, Flounder, flounder in the sea, my wife, my wife, Isabel, wants not, wants not what I will. What does she want then? Oh, flounder, my wife wants to become emperor. Go home. She is already emperor. Then the man went home, and when he arrived there, the entire palace was made of polished marble with alabaster statues and golden decoration. Soldiers were marching outside the gate, blowing trumpets and beating timpani and drums. Inside the house, barons and counts and dukes were walking around like servants. They opened the doors for him, which were made of pure gold. He went inside where his wife was sitting on a throne made of one piece of gold, a good two miles high. And she was wearing a large golden crown that was three yards high, all set with diamonds and rubies. In the one hand, she had a scepter, and in the other, the imperial orb. Bodyguards were standing in two rows at her sides, each one smaller than the other, beginning with the largest giant and ending with the littlest dwarf, who was no larger than my little finger. Many princes and dukes were standing in front of her. The man went and stood among them and said, Wife, are you emperor now? Yes, I am emperor. He stood and looked at her for a while. Wife, it's very nice that you are emperor. Husband, why are you standing there? Now that I am emperor, I want to become pope. Wife, what do you want? There's only one pope in Christendom. You cannot be pope. Husband, I want to become pope. Go immediately. I must become pope this very day. No, wife, I cannot tell him that. It will come to no good. That is too much. The flounder cannot make you pope. Husband, what nonsense. If he can make me emperor, then he can make me pope as well. Go there immediately. I am emperor, and you are my husband. Are you going? The frightened man went. He felt sick all over. His knees and legs were shaking, and the wind was blowing over the land, and clouds flew by as the darkness of evening fell. Leaves blew from the trees, and the water roared and boiled as it crashed onto the shore. In the distance, he could see ships shooting distress signals as they tossed and turned on the waves. There was a little blue in the middle of the sky, but on all sides it had turned red, as in a terrible lightning storm. Full of despair, he stood there and said, Flounder, flounder in the sea, my wife, my wife Ilsebil wants not, wants not what I will. What does she want, then? Oh, well, she wants to become Pope. Go home. She is already Pope. Then he went home. And when he arrived there, there was a large church surrounded by nothing but palaces. He forced his way through the crowd. Inside, everything was illuminated with thousands and thousands of lights. And his wife was clothed in pure gold and sitting on a much higher throne. She was wearing three large golden crowns. She was surrounded with church-like splendor, and at her sides there were two banks of candles. The largest was as thick and as tall as the largest tower down to the smallest kitchen candle. And all the emperors and kings were kneeling before her, kissing her slipper. Wife, are you Pope now? Yes, I am Pope. Then he stood there looking at her, and it was as if he were looking into the bright sun. After he had looked at her for a while, he said, Wife, it, it is good that you are Pope. She stood there as stiff as a tree, neither stirring nor moving. Wife, be satisfied now that you are Pope. 
There is nothing else you can become. I have to think about that. Then they both went to bed, but she was not satisfied. Her desires would not let her sleep. She kept thinking about what she wanted to become next. The man slept well and soundly, for he had run about a lot during the day, but the woman could not sleep at all. She tossed and turned from one side to the other all night long, always thinking about what she could become, but she could not think of anything. Then the sun was about to rise, and when she saw the early light of dawn, she sat up in bed and watched through the window as the sun came up. Ah! Uh -huh. Could not I cause the sun and the moon to rise? Husband, wake up. Go back to the flounder. I want to become like God. The man, who was still mostly asleep, was so startled that he fell out of bed. He thought he had misunderstood her. <coughs> Wife, what did you say? Husband, I cannot stand it when I see the sun and the moon rising, and I cannot cause it to do so. I will not have a single hour of peace until I myself can cause them to rise. Go there immediately. I want to become like God. Oh, wife, the flounder cannot do that. He can make you emperor and pope. But I beg you, be satisfied and remain pope. Anger fell over her. Her hair flew wildly about her head. She kicked him with her foot and shouted, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it any longer. Go there immediately. He put on his trousers and ran off like a madman. Outside, such a storm was raging that he could barely stand on his feet. Houses and trees were blowing over, the mountains were shaking, and boulders were rolling from the cliffs into the sea. The sky was as black as pitch. There was thunder and lightning. In the sea, there were great black waves as high as church towers and mountains, all capped with crowns of white foam. Flounder, flounder in the sea. My wife, my wife, Elizabeth, wants not, wants not what I will. What does she want, then? She, she wants to become like God. Go home. She is sitting in her filthy shack again. And they are sitting there even today. Thank you for joining us for our story this evening. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, before you go, just one reminder, like our Facebook page, stop over at our YouTube channel and subscribe. And until next time, we're the Pass the Time Players. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.